patent ductus. Doesn't look like it's gonna close by itself, so we, uh, we may have to operate. I'd like you to take a look at the baby, check it out, Keith, and then tell me what you think. Okay, let's go. I'd like her to be here. Oh, Gina, it's Rick. Look, I have Keith Raymond here, and we're just discussing the possibility of surgery for Heather's baby. I was wondering if you could come down for a few minutes. We're hoping that it would close by itself, but as you can see, there's no sign of that yet. No, but if his <clears throat> condition is stable, I think we're still making the right decision. Mm -hmm. Hello. Ah, Gina. This is Dr. Raymond, Dr. Lansing, Dr. Gina Dante. Um, how do you do, Dr. Raymond? How do you do? Dr. Lansing I know from Denver. How are you, Gina? I didn't realize you two knew each other. Yes, we were colleagues at Mountain Memorial. I see. Well, Keith and I have uh, both evaluated the baby's condition. And we agree that as long as he remains stable, we don't want to risk sub subjecting him to the pain of an operation. I see. But what happens if he suddenly takes a turn for the worse? We'll just have to deal with that problem when it arises. We're hoping that it won't. <laughs> Do some fence mending. Do you have a minute? Come on in. Steve called and uh, told me he was keeping you on the staff. Yes. He's been very generous about it, I must say. Mm hmm. I guess you know that Leslie played a big part in his decision. And not to say that Steve doesn't make up his own mind but her opinion carried a lot of weight. I know. He told me what she'd done. I'm very grateful to her. It, it isn't easy for me to come here and ask for favors, but it seems I have to. Steve said he'd keep me on, but he couldn't guarantee whether I could stay on your service. He said he wouldn't recommend it, and that it's your decision to make. I know. He told me. Rick, I want to stay on your service. Is there any way you can separate the harm I've done you personally with my professional ability? You know, you once asked me if I thought you'd make it as a surgeon. And I wasn't any more certain then than you were. But you've proven you can do it, Monica. You can be a top surgeon. And if Steve can separate the personal from the professional. Well, I guess I can, too. You can stay on my service if you want to. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. But just keep on doing the kind of work you're capable of. That's all I ask. I'll do my best. Or something else? Yes, uh, there's one other thing. Gina told me that you disqualified yourself if Jeff's baby should need surgery. If you decide he does, I'd like to assist Dr. Raymond. You would? Why not? I don't have any emotional involvement with Jeff. That ended a long time ago. Maybe I can make up to him in some small way for the pain I caused him. You, it would be just as easy for us to switch the party um, to the penthouse. You wouldn't be any trouble. It, you just have to call people, you know, and say we're going to be in a different place. You're sure? Okay, then. All right, why don't I see you after work, then, and we can sort of set our final plan. No, uh, Terry, no. I just, I thought, you know, I'd give you the option. Okay, yes, I'll be there at 5 o'clock. Goodbye. You, uh, couldn't talk her out of it, huh? No. She says she's up to it and wants to go ahead as planned, but if you want my opinion, I don't think she's in very good shape at all. 
Well, I'm not surprised. The district attorney really put her through the meat grinder yesterday. I know, and I think that is so unfair. It makes me so angry the way they can... They can take even the most innocent thing and make it seem awful and twist everything so that you're saying exactly what they want you to. He made a relationship with Marv seem like something cheap and, and tawdry. She told me she never felt so humiliated in her whole life. I'm sure it also can't have been very pleasant for her having to go through talking about it all with Mary Ellen sitting right there hanging on every word. I don't think that it's been very pleasant right from the very beginning. No, I guess they never have had what you could call a happy relationship. Oh, Rick, it's just not fair. Why can't everybody be as happy as we are? Well, we're just lucky, I guess. The break I had since you called me and asked if you could use my uh, superior mind. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? I've got a couple of problems with the seating for the party. What's the matter? Don't you have enough chairs? Plenty of chairs. The question is, who do we put in which ones and with whom? Well, how about one big table and we could sit everybody around it? A little unwieldy. Oh. What I would like to do is have nice, cozy little tables for four, only we've got 17 and that don't come out even. Oh, you're right. 17 is not divisible by four. But <laughs> what you could do is you could put five chairs at each table and then we could elect someone to be a floating guest. Very funny. Also a little tiny bit impractical. Now then, what we have is we have a couple of people who plan to come alone. However, I really hate being the one who has to decide who has to eat dinner without a dinner partner. And so, I thought that I would show you the list, and then you can decide who's going to be odd man out. Uh -huh. Well, go ahead. I don't have a uh, superior mind for nothing, you know. Uh, yes. Okay, top of the list. We have Steve and Audrey, who are your basic guests of honor. And since we're the hosts, but all rights, they should be at our table. You think so? Mm-hmm. Okay. All righty. Oh, wait a second. Oh, of course. What is the matter with me? Laura will sit with us, and she'll be the fifth person. Brilliant. Brilliant. You see how easily and quickly I solve all our problems. What would I ever do without you? I don't know, but you better not try. Is Laura looking forward to... Uh, our little party? Oh, is she? She's all but hysterical with delight. She's so thrilled that she got invited to a grown-up party. She really is going to look lovely in that dress. Yeah, just like her mother. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay, now, next names on the list are Heather and Jeff. I thought... Probably the most logical people to put them with would be Gina and Adam because they worked so hard to help save the baby. No argument for me. Okay. Ah, uh, oh. Okay, now, we have Gary Lansing. Steve invited him. But I thought, well, maybe I could put him with Jesse and Lee and Gail. Except that that leaves us with Peter and Diane and Terry and Mark, and I don't know about that. Why not? Well, first of all, I'm not sure about Diana. I don't think she was exactly in a party mood when she left here for her mother's. Well, party mood or not, she's not going to want to miss an occasion like this any more than she'd want to miss the wedding the next day. Well, I hope not. But then, um, Terry and Mark. Well, I suppose we could put Terry and Mark together, except I'm afraid this might be a really sad time for them, you know, with what's going on with his wife and all. I am sure that they will rise to the occasion. Don't you worry about it. Well, okay, if you're sure. Um, Rick, would you... Or would you be upset if I invited Monica? Upset? No. But I think that you ought to check with Steve and Audrey. After all, the party is for them. What do you think they'll say? Oh, I think that they will probably agree. But... If you do, we have to remember one thing. You are going to end up with another odd fivesome. Oh, good grief, that's right. Going out to see Mary Ellen didn't accomplish anything at all. I might as well save my time and energy and everything else. Well, don't feel bad about it. Your heart was in it, you did everything that you could. Yeah. What's really bothering me is something that hit me when I was driving back in the car. Mark asked me once, 
If I ever recalled any specific incidences before Mary Ellen's accident when she was behaving unstable. And at the time, I didn't remember anything, but all of a sudden, driving back, this, this whole thing came back to me. And I remember one time in particular, and it was at their wedding reception yet, we were all standing around drinking champagne, and I was standing next to Mary Ellen. And all of a sudden, she closes her hand around her champagne glass and crushed it. She was standing there watching Mark talking to some woman that he had known a long time ago, and she had this savage expression on her face. And I, I tried to get her to bandage her hand because it was bleeding, and she just brushed me away. And I remember thinking, that's a lot more than just jealousy. And now, you know, she sits up there in that courtroom, just cool and composed. Now, surely a judge is going to be smart enough to see through that. Well, I hope that Mark has planned himself for a, a finding of same, because it could happen. Well, I hope not for her sake, because if it does, she'll be brought to trial, and she's bound to be found guilty. Then she'll have to go to prison for God only knows how long. And that's how long Mark is going to have to be bound to her. Well, he doesn't have to be. Oh, come on, Rick. You know Mark. As long as she's in trouble and as long as she needs him, he will stand by her. And I'm just afraid that that's going to be forever. Adam. Heather. Oh, hi. Hi. You know, if you haven't changed your mind about the seating, I would be glad to give you a hand. Oh, no, I haven't changed my mind. Thank you. I'll... Uh, here. You can do this group. Mm -hmm. That's that table right there, and you can do it however you think it should be. Okay. Audrey, I guess, should be seated facing the dance floor. Good idea. And the prospective groom on the right of her. Oh, and the hostess with the mostess on the ball. Thank you, Doctor. And uh, the dashing host and Laura. I'm going to put space coats out for Peter and Diane anyway. I don't understand. Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you. Um, Peter called me yesterday. He'd gone up to Diane's mother's house to try and get Diane out of her depression, but without much success. Mm-hmm. She's still convinced that there's no hope of getting little Mike back, huh? Yeah. Yeah, Peter said, um... She doesn't want to come to the party or the wedding. But, I mean, you never know. She could change her mind. Okay, let's see what you've got here. That's very good. Turn them Honey, away. One. don't let Diana's troubles get you down. I want you to enjoy our first party. <laughs> our first party? Mm -hmm. The first of many, I hope. And I can hardly wait to dance with the most beautiful girl in the room. Well, then. Don't. You know, I think this is even better than tonight's going to be. Oh, no. Tonight there'll be... Music and champagne and laughter. Ah, uh, but tonight, I'm not going to be able to do this.